Okay, let's uh, start the talk. Uh, okay, welcome everyone uh, to an unusual day of seminar. Uh, we have with us uh, Takuro Yamashita from Toulouse School of Economics. Uh, uh, Takuro works on mechanism design and implementation theory. And uh, the current paper that he's going to present with joined by C.E. Monsoon and Carolyn Thomas. It's uh, titled Social Choice Under Gradual Learning. So, Takuro, the talk is 75 minutes long. Uh, you can take questions as you go along. Uh, so okay. Call you. Thank you. So thanks for well, having me uh, for the seminar and thanks for uh, being here. Um, yeah, it's a joint paper with uh, Iman Soon who uh, who who did a postdoc uh, in in Toulouse, and he will actually join um, Prague, the Sergi uh, UI uh, from September, um, and also Caroline Thomas, who is in who is a theorist in uh, uh, Texas Austin. Um, we are interested in social decision making or optimal mechanism for social decision making uh, when people or voters learn their preferences only gradually over time. So it's a dynamic. Uh, uh, sort of uh, decision problem, uh, social decision problem. Um, a main sort of example uh, we begin with, although I must say that um, our result does not necessarily fit perfectly to this uh, example, you, you will see later. Um, but uh, let me uh, motivate uh, this problem based on this Brexit referendum. Um, so basically, you know, this EU government, the UK government uh, decides whether to stay in the EU or leave it. More generally, you can imagine uh, some status quo policy versus a reform policy, and the government seeks to implement, uh, let's say, the utilitarian optimal policy. <clears throat> Um, of course, uh, people don't necessarily agree. Some people benefit from EU, others not. In this kind of situation, this uh, example, uh, on top of that, many voters uh, seem to be initially uncertain. Um, so, you know, in the end, like they might find what are their preferences, but at the time of uh, election, uh, they don't, uh, they don't really know. So they can only gradually learn their preferences over time. And also, uh, typically, that sort of information is their private information. So the mechanism uh, basically um, uh, tries to, you know, uh, elicit that sort of information to make a, a, a better decision. Okay, so these two keywords, two other keywords, like gradual learning and private information. So to explain this, let me think about uh, what if uh, there is only one uh, issue but not the other. So let's imagine that um, people have private information, like as like their pre preferences, uh, private information, but there is no learning. Okay, uh, let's say some people know they like EU, some people know they dislike EU, some people might be uncertain, but let's suppose that they don't learn. Okay, at all. In that case, of course, the problem is essentially a static problem. And you know uh, we know quite a lot about static uh, optimal voting mechanism, which is basically weighted majority voting. So with, without gradual learning, we know more or less what to do. What about the other case? Suppose that people learn over time their preferences, uh, but uh, not as private information. So that let's say this uh, gradual learning outcome is a public information. In particular, the government can know what are the signals that people receive. Uh, the problem is essentially that this government is receiving a bunch of signals each period, and he decides whether to stay in the EU or not. Yeah? So if you imagine realistically that you know, once you leave uh, EU, it's difficult to come back again, it becomes essentially an optimal stopping problem. Yeah? So well, uh, it's a still a complicated problem, but you know we more or less know how to uh, tackle that sort of problem. Now we are interested in the case with both of them. And then as we see on the course, um, the social decision mechanism requires some novel distortions in order to uh, achieve this you know, truth telling uh, constraint or incentive compatibility constraint. <clears throat> so we're interested in what sorts of distortion or inefficiency are useful and uh, necessary and why, why that's so, and so on and so forth. Okay. Technically, what we do here is in the intersection of dynamic mechanism design without monetary transfer and collective experimentation. And uh, you know, uh, there should be many other interesting applications in this intersection, 
um, hopefully what we do here uh, could be useful uh, in, in other applications too, but you know, that's, uh, that's for future and you are, uh, any thought uh, from you would be of course quite welcome. Okay, so uh, I will spend some time, let's say 10 minutes uh, or so uh, to, uh, to think about this first case, yeah, first benchmark case where people have private information, but it's essentially a static uh, situation. If you already are familiar with a static voting problem, then you know the next 10 minutes is already what do you know, but you know, bear with it. I think this can uh, uh, point to some problems uh, that we can, um, you know, uh, that, that play some important role even in a dynamic uh, full model. Okay. So let me talk about this no learning or static uh, kind of problem. So say we have N voters and there are two social alternatives, A or B. Um, a is like a status quo policy uh, and B is uh, a reform policy, like EU, staying EU or Brexit. Yeah. Payoff under this uh, Brexit, let's suppose this is zero. Um, and payoff under A depends on your preference type, voters preference type. Okay. So there are three possible types. <clears throat> the first case, uh, he's a pro A type. Uh, in that case, if policy A is uh, still on the table, then he gets payoff alpha, which is positive. Yeah, so better than zero. If you are pro B type, uh, then you get something less than zero, say minus one in policy A. The third case is that uh, you are uh, not yet inf or not informed and there's no learning in this uh, static benchmark. So literally you are uninformed. Um, yeah. In this case, uh, you get uh, some expected uh, payoff uh, and what you may want to have in mind as, uh, as um, uh, distribution is something like this. So, uh, say you're fundamentally either pro A type or pro B uh, type, okay, probability P or one minus P, but you may know it or not know it, yeah? So this first case, uh, the theta equal A, this is this um, upper left case that he's pro A and he knows it. This second red case is this one here. So he knows, uh, uh, he knows uh, it is a pro B. Uh, the third case is uh, that he doesn't know what is his true preference position, but uh, it's, you know, probability P, he is pro A, 1 minus P, uh, pro B. So his expected payoff of staying in policy A is this P times alpha minus uh, 1 minus P. Okay. Throughout the paper and also the talk, uh, I assume that this pi U, uh, so this expected payoff of the, of the uninformed guy is negative. Okay. Oops, uh, I guess I got some chat message. Payoff alpha is common for all voter. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's a simplifying assumption. Yeah, and it's it's common. The value is uh, is known. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, types are IID uh, across both. Ah, sorry. Yeah, I, I was uh, still mentioning this one. Yeah. So the uninformed uh, voter in expectation, uh, he he prefers policy B. Yeah. The other case. Is also interesting. I'm not saying that you know that case is not interesting, but uh, it's it, it's also quite different uh, actually. And that's uh, let's say uh, well potentially a different uh, paper, at least different section. Um, and the types of IID across voters, so there is no uh, common value component here. Yeah, or aggregate uncertainty. <clears throat> okay, so it's you know quite simple model in that sense. Um, and imagine some utilitarian governmental principle who designs a direct mechanism. Uh, so each person I reports either his A type, B type or uninformed type. And because of symmetry of the environment, it's without loss to focus on anonymous mechanism, which only depends on the number of A reports and number of B reports. The number of U reports is of course N minus A minus B. Yeah? And what a mechanism specifies is the probability of staying in policy A given the reports uh, AB. <clears throat> okay, so that's the same thing. Yeah. So let's first see what is the first best uh, decision. Yeah. Uh, in other words, what if there is no incentive compatibility concern? Yeah. If we can assume to stay. Um, in that case, of course, you're going to stay uh, in policy A if and only if the total expected surplus is positive and otherwise you leave. Yeah. So what is the total expected surplus? Uh, you have A times alpha uh, payoffs. 
you have B times minus one payoffs and all the uninformed guys, uh, they get pi U, uh, which is negative. Yeah, so if this total is positive, you stay, otherwise you leave. So for example, if you have two voters, um, uh, say alpha is close to one, but slightly less, and pi U almost zero, or just slightly negative, um, uh, what happens in this case? Okay, so pi U is almost zero, so this is almost zero, and alpha is almost one, so essentially like you stay in policy A, uh, if I know only if this small A is uh, greater than small B, yeah? The tie is broken in favor of policy B because uh, alpha is slightly less than one. By the way, uh, you know, if you have any question, feel free to, to step in. And also like if you feel uh, yeah, I'm too, too slow or too fast or whatever, you know, uh, uh, just uh, let me know. So, okay, so uh, in the two voter case, yeah, so in table wise, this looks like this. So if you have uh, ties, then uh, then you, you prefer B, right? Um, uh, and if you have more Bs, of course, you leave. If you have uh, uh, more A, sorry, uh, than B, then you stay in the policy. Okay. All right, so this is first best, yeah? Um, but of course, uh, this uh, is not incentive compatible. Uh, and here is the problem. So imagine that you are uh, one of the uninformed guys, okay? And uh, ask yourself, uh, do, you pr uh, do you want to truthfully report uh, you uh, in this sort of mechanism? Yeah? The answer turns out to be no, uh, because you basically want to mimic type B. And here is uh, the logic. So there are only two voters. Yeah, in this example. So it depends on what the other guy reports. If the other guy reports either B or U, then um, under true stating, okay, there's no A report, and hence uh, well, we are actually either here or there, right? So you leave the U. Um, if you report B, then you are either here or there. So again, you leave. Yeah, so it doesn't matter uh, what you report. You are a pivotal guy when the other guy reports A, because uh, if the other guy reports A and you report truth free, then there is there's only one A vote and zero B vote, uh, and therefore you stay in policy A, like this. While if you misreport uh, uh, your B type, then you are in a one-one situation, and therefore you leave. And remember that pi U is negative, so as an uninformed guy, you have a slight preference for um, for leaving and and then uh, you have an incentive to mimic, yeah, strictly incentive to mimic. Okay, so therefore this is uh, this first best allocation. Uh, the decision is not incentive compatible. And in fact, in this static situation, this incentive compatibility requirement has a very strong consequence that uh, essentially uh, the social decision cannot depend on the number of B reports. It can only depend on the number of A reports. In other words, B reports and U reports must be treated exactly the same way. Otherwise, uh, type U would mimic uh, type B. So the, the implementable uh, oops, uh, mechanism looks like uh, this table or that table. I mean, there are uh, other kinds, uh, but you know, these two other instances. The point is that horizontally, like you have the same symbols. Yeah, that's that's what this condition means. Okay, so uh, we may call it uh, a or not a mechanism because uh, in this sort of mechanism, uh, you can essentially uh, imagine that each voter is asked to report either you prefer a or b. Okay, and uh, if the number of a's is enough, then you stay in a. Otherwise, you leave. So here, like if you have one A report, you stay. This one, you need two reports to stay in A, otherwise you leave. Okay, so uh, this problem that you cannot distinguish B reports and U reports are actually a quite classical, like well-known voters intensity problem in the static uh, voting uh, literature. Oops. Uh, yeah, so uh, 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 this voting mechanism can elicit ordinal information, but not cutting off. Yeah, that's the point of this. Uh... Okay, so um, what we want to see is how this story changes if you have dynamics and learning. So let's think about uh, simplest uh, departure, uh, uh, this two-period model, and later we talk about a more periods case. 
Okay. So imagine that there are two periods, uh, zero and one, and you have discount uh, factor, common discount factor delta. At the beginning of each period, uh, voter I may learn his preference position according to the same distribution as before. Yeah, so with probability lambda p, you learn your A type, lambda types one minus p, you learn your B type, the other probability one minus, oops, sorry, uh, one minus lambda, you learn. At t equal one, uh, it depends on what, what was your type uh, in period zero. If you are already informed, either A or B type, then your type will not change. Yeah? So your preference position is uh, persistent over time. The only case your type can change is when you were uninformed at the beginning. And in that case, you draw again, according to the same distribution. You become either A, B, or U in period one. Okay? And the payoffs are also the same. So policy B, you get zero. Policy A, you either get alpha minus one or pi U, which is not. Okay. So it's you know just uh, uh, repeating the same thing twice. A mechanism uh, is also uh, similar as to before. So you, uh, a mechanism now uh, identifies the probability of staying both in period zero and period one, depending on the history of the reports by that time. And the switching to policy B is irreversible, which implies uh, some sort of monotonicity uh, in the probability of staying in A. So, Takuro, if you can explain this again, uh, you know what happens in each of the two periods. If you, if you, if the outcome is B in period zero, then nothing. You know, then the game is. Then over. nothing happens. Yeah, yeah. And if it's A, you can take another decision in period one, and uh, uh, I see. I, I see. Uh, would it make sense to say that you know if? Yeah, you do nothing, you wait. If it's not B, you wait or something like that. But here you get the payoff from A in period one, right? In your- Right, uh, right. Okay, okay. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Thanks. yeah, mm. yeah. So waiting means you are still in EU, yeah. Okay. And, uh, and this transition probabilities do not depend on the decisions in the first period? Sorry, uh, say it again. No, the, the, the transition probability, like uh, uh, whether the probabilities with which you go from uninformed ah, to informed. This one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They don't depend on what decision was taken in period one. Uh, also, I mean, uh, this uh, would make sense only if you stay in policy A, right? If you leave, your payoff is zero forever. Oh, okay, yeah, the okay. game is over. Yeah. So okay, this makes okay. sense only when your decision before was all one. Or all, right. yeah, all one. Yeah, or stay in A. Good. Okay. Other questions? All right. Good. So yeah, you know the uh, what I learned by doing dynamic mechanism design. This is one of my first dynamic papers. Uh, what I learned is that you know the notation is quite complicated even in a simple uh, setup. Um, so yeah, uh, I understand. Uh, you know uh, there could be many questions, like clarifying clarifying questions. Feel free to to stop me. All right. Um, so yeah, once again, uh, let's uh, let's see what happens in the first best mechanism, like without incentive concerns. Um, it's similar uh, to the static case. So of course, in the last period, it's exactly the same as before. Um, but in the period before, uh, it doesn't not only concern this uh, current payoff, but also potential future payoff. Right, because uh, once you leave the EU, you cannot come back. So there is an option value of staying in EU. Uh, so if even if let's say this is slightly, sorry, so, yeah, slightly and slightly negative, if the second part, the future payoff in period one, the option value is positive, you may potentially want to wait yeah, uh, in, in staying in policy A. So that's the option value. But otherwise, you know, this is similar to the static uh, problem. And for a similar reason, first best uh, is not uh, is not really uh, incentive compatible. Okay, so uh, the first question is: What are the incentive compatible mechanisms? Um, one class of mechanisms that are incentive compatible uh, is to repeat essentially a static uh, incentive compatible mechanisms, meaning a or not a votes twice. 
So that means that uh, initial uh, uh, probability of staying in A only depends on A0, but not on B0. And the second period decision only depends on A's, but not on B's, yeah? <clears throat> okay, so here's one instance. So let's say period zero, uh, you stay in policy A if and only if there is at least one A vote, yeah? Period two, you remain in A only if there is a unanimous two votes uh, for A. Yeah, otherwise you leave. The difference in this threshold might be because of this uh, option value of weighting, right? So by staying in policy A, even if there is only one A vote, uh, you might uh, find that there are you know, uh, many A voters um, uh, in the next period. In that case, you may potentially want to vote, something like that, yeah? So this, uh, this is one instance uh, uh, of such a mechanism. Okay, it's easy to show that they are incentive compatible. But the question is, are there other uh, incentive compatible mechanisms and hopefully better ones? And the answer is gonna be yes. Uh, and uh, quite generally, uh, as you see in the next slide, and the key sort of uh, idea for uh, for better for constructing better mechanisms is what we call an option value of true stilling. So let me uh, explain this idea in the next slide. So this is the same uh, same uh, sequence of mechanisms, yeah, of this a or not a twice. <clears throat> the claim is that this mechanism uh, can be strictly improved. The key observation for that claim is that uh, if you look at this sequence of mechanisms, uh, I mean, the, this, this mechanism, sorry, the sequence of decisions, um, the incentive compatibility at time zero, if you look at that, uh, that one is actually strictly slack. And therefore, based on this strict slackness, we can modify uh, this mechanism by essentially making this initial period decision closer to the first best and then uh, we get the strict improvement, okay? So let's, uh, let's see uh, this, this two-step logic uh, one by one. So let's first uh, see why incentive compatibility at the t equal zero is strictly slack. Imagine that, so again, you know, there are only two voters in this example, yeah? Uh, and imagine you're voter one and you're uninformed at time zero, okay? What would be your payoff uh, uh, under true stelling, okay? <clears throat> So um, it depends on the other guy's report. Uh, if the other guy reports uh, uh, B or U, then, um, so if, if, well, yeah, then you are either here or there, yeah? And therefore you leave uh, the EU um, and you never come back, yeah? So the only case when you get the non-zero non payoff is when the other guy actually reports a type. Yeah, so he, he is informed uh, as a type, in which case, um, actually, uh, you will get, uh, you will stay uh, in policy A, right? So you need only one A report to stay in uh, policy A, and you get uh, pi U as expected payoff, which is negative. What happens in next period? Well, next period, you need two A reports to stay in policy A, okay? And the, the second guy already claimed that he's A type, so he's, you know, his type will not change. So the only case uh, you can stay in policy A is yourself learning uh, type A, yeah? In that case, okay, you get, uh, uh, you get pay of alpha, yeah? Because your, your type is now A, you learned your type. Okay. If you learn that your type is B or you're still uninformed, then, uh, then basically you leave the EU, yeah? So that will be zero. So this is the only case when, where you get something non-zero in second period. Okay, so this is under true stelling. Now what happens uh, if you mimic uh, type B uh, at t equal zero? Well, uh, the first period, it doesn't matter uh, because you know, as, as long as the second guy claims uh, his A type, uh, your report doesn't matter, you stay in A, yeah? So you get pi U, yeah? Your true type is still U, so you get pi U, which is negative. Now what happens in period one? Well, you have already reported that you are, you, you are B type and the, you know, the, the, the transition is of course such that once you're B type, then you know, your type will not change. So once you report B at T equal zero, you, you don't have a chance to revise your report anymore, okay? 
And what's the consequence? Well, you are treated as B type even in period one, and hence you are in one one situation, right? So player two says A, you player one says B, and hence you are leaving the EU. So you get payoff zero in this uh, second period. And this is true even if you now learn that you are actually A type. Yeah? So you kind of you know, feel regret in that case. Okay, and the difference is strictly positive. Yeah, the, that's what I meant by uh, I see being strictly slack here. So uh, what's the difference? Well, the difference is that you know, by reporting your type truthfully, you keep the option of revising your report next period. Yeah? In other words, you have an option value of uh, truthfully reporting you are uninformed. Okay? So this uh, sort of option value creates a strict slackness. And therefore, this slackness can be uh, leveraged to make an improvement uh, based on this A or not A twice mechanism. Okay, is that clear? Roughly? Okay. So um, how we should uh, modify the mechanism depends on the parameters. In some instances, uh, here is uh, uh, the, uh, the, good, the, the good way. Um, so basically what you do is to introduce the probability of switching to B uh, in this one one state. Now remember in this uh, A or not A mechanism, it was A for sure, but now we introduce uh, some probability. Okay, uh, this probability is determined in order to make uh, incentive compatibility binding at time zero. Yeah? If you make this uh, completely B, like probability zero of staying in A, then you know we have this A versus B sort of situation. So I C will be violated. Um, so we need some you know some some number in between. Okay, <clears throat> okay. so that's. Um, uh, that's the uh, how we can potentially improve in this two period situation. So far, so good. So here you say I'm uninformed. I mean, uh, what does this guy actually say? I mean, uh, is or is it just a probability announcement? Uh, how are you? Uh, you know, what's the message this guy sends? Right. So here, you know, the type space is quite simple. You are either fully in, like perfectly informed as a type perfectly informed as B type, or you haven't received any information yet, like completely uninformed. So, so shouldn't you have three messages then? Rather you than have three messages, yeah. Okay. But yeah, the, yeah. did A I answer? Then? And what is A star? Uh, ah, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. And what is A star? How should we interpret A star? I mean- Sorry, sorry, so yeah, this, this I just uh, mean that uh, here, we, um, if, there, there was one A report and one B report in the mechanism. Uh, then we basically uh, switch to policy B with some probability and stay in A otherwise. Okay, okay, thank you. And what should be the probability? Uh, that depends on when your IC is, uh, is binding with equality. Okay, good. So yeah, yeah, question, Arunapa? I just wanted to say thank you. <laughs> okay, good, thanks. Um, all right, so in this two period mechanism, uh, the, the problem, um, you know, this two period problem is useful to explain this option value of uh, true telling. But in terms of optimal mechanism, it's still somewhat unclear, at least to me, um, what are, you know, what should be the intuition for this, um, you know, uh, uh, good mechanisms. So that is why uh, in the rest of the talk, um, I will talk about uh, more periods, actually uh, infinitely many periods case. So, so the optimal mechanism in that two period model also, if I understand really did not, uh, uh, was, was not a function of U report, right? It, 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 uh, it is a function of uh, U report. Because here, you know, um, we have one A report, zero B report, oh, meaning there's okay. one U report. Yeah. Okay, if okay. You're, uh, uh, you have zero U report and oh, instead okay, of okay, one okay. B report, you are more likely, yeah, to, to switch to B. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I cannot, you know, draw a three dimensional table. So that's why. Yeah. Right. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks. 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 
Okay, so let's see uh, what happens uh, with more periods. Um, yeah, so the two periods, it's a bit special because last period is, uh, is basically trivial. Um, we have, when we have more periods, you know, there are more non-trivial periods and, you know, things are in that sense more complicated, but also more insightful. Uh, in particular, we can talk about, you know, do we have more efficiency or less efficiency? Uh, what sorts of efficiency we have over time? We can talk about that. Also, like uh, so, this one. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, do you know? Do all ICs bind, or you know, only some of them? Actually, uh, the answer will be the first. Like all should be binding, at least in certain cases. Uh, but you know, these kind of things we can now talk uh, about with more periods. The complication uh, is, of course, uh, that you know uh, the, the the notation and model uh, becomes gigantic. Um, so one is that you know here it's a kind of absorbing process, right? The, the type this the type transition is kind of absorbing, uh, which is quite non-stationary. So uh, uh, that at least for us uh, that's a source of uh, one source of complication and interruptibility. So we will make uh, some assumptions um, to more or less control this. Um, the other thing is that you know the space of mechanisms also become quite large. Um, as I just uh, mentioned, you know, even with two periods, perhaps some stochasticity would be necessary to achieve uh, exact second best. What happens, uh, you know, if we have more periods, uh, that would be more complicated. Um, the two period case, fortunately, this the mechanism looks like a monotone mechanism in the sense that, you know, you are moving to be more likely if you have more B reports and less A reports. But you know, uh, we don't know whether that's uh, that's always the case. More uh, trouble is a kind of history dependence. I mean, with two periods, even yeah, uh, with more periods, uh, it could be. I mean, I have no idea about history dependence. Actually, uh, we might need some complicated history dependence. Um, so, so basically, you know, um, uh, what I what we could do is to give a guess and verify. Um, approach uh, based on some Lagrangian weak duality uh, idea. Um, so we, we're going to show that you know, some particular class of mechanism is optimal or close to be optimal under certain assumptions based on this case and verify. Um, otherwise, um, I must say that uh, we are still uh, uncertain you know, about what are the optimal, like general optimal mechanisms. Anyway, so uh, I will report uh, what, I, what I know or what we know. Okay, so the model is a simple, like natural extension of uh, this one period, two period model. So now we have uh, more periods with this kind of factor delta. At each period, at the beginning of each period, person I learns either type A, B, or U. Once you learn A or B, your type never changes. Yeah, only if you're uninformed, um, you draw the same, uh, uh, same thing. And the payoffs are also the same, either zero in policy B, uh, which is irreversible. Uh, or alpha minus one or pi u, depending on your type in policy A. Okay. okay. Good. So uh, for the next, I think, 10 minutes or so, uh, let me talk about uh, the small number of agent case. Uh, in a more agent case, I will come back later. Um, so let's assume there are only essentially two agents, but the, the three agents, uh, um, it's confusing. Uh, let me say three agents first, okay? While uh, agent zero is already, for some reason, publicly known as a type, okay? So essentially, there are only two real agents, uh, agent one and two, okay? Um, this is, you know, basically to make the, pre the principal slightly prefer policy A relative to the, the utilitarian, okay? Um, so alternative, you know, assumption you can make is to say that, okay, directly we assume principle is slightly biased toward A, yeah. uh, rather than assuming there is this uh, fictitious agent zero, um, but uh, either way. Um, actually, we don't even need uh, agent zero, but uh, uh, assuming agent zero or slight bias for the principle will simplify some story uh, a little bit. So, so therefore, I, I assume that. Okay, good. So when I talk about the table like of zero, one, two, it's, I'm always talking about real agent one or two. Yeah, for agent zero, he's already gone. Okay. 
All right, so uh, the, in terms of the parameters, let's, let's assume that alpha is slightly less than one, but close to one, and uh, pi u is negative, but close to zero, uh, the same as before. And uh, more important assumption is that uh, lambda and delta are small. So the lambda is the probability that person learns his uh, true preference position, yeah? So the small lambda means that learning happens, but very slowly. And also delta is small, meaning that, uh, well, people are not, uh, not very patient, okay? And uh, these assumptions, if you look at the first best, the first best is actually a stationary policy, uh, which is to stay in uh, policy A if and only if um, uh, you have more or equal uh, A votes uh, to uh, B, B reports. So now we have A's yeah, in case of Thai instead of B's uh, because of this assumption that you know the, there is this additional agent who is already uh, A type, but otherwise it's uh, it's similar to before. Okay, and for a similar reason, I see would be violated uh, if you uh, if you consider the first best uh, mechanism. Okay, so far so good. Good, so um, here is the description of the second best mechanism and later I explain uh, some intuition for this. So let me first describe this uh, mechanism. The optimal uh, IC mechanism uh, has this T star, uh, some finite number, which uh, I may call a deadline or election date. Before this deadline, it looks like this left table. So most of the cases you just stay in policy A. The only exception is when two guys already report to real voters already report that they are B type. In that case, there is some probability of switching to, uh, to policy B. Okay. Otherwise you stay. Once this deadline comes, uh, it's as if like you run an election on this state T star and say, if there is at least one A vote, we stay in A, otherwise you leave, uh, leave to B, okay? So, it, you know, this one looks like an A or not A decision, yeah? Okay, so that's, uh, that's the second best mechanism in this case. Um, so relative to the first best, so this blue part in the first best, it should be A, yeah, zero, zero should be A. Um, relative to the first best, this is efficient. But after T star, this is inefficient, like inefficiently sort of leaving to B. The red part in the first best, they were both B, but now um, uh, in before T star, uh, we inefficiently stay in policy A, while after T star, this is efficient. Okay, so what we observe is a very sort of different um, combination of uh, 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 efficiency or inefficiency in decisions uh, over time, right? So there is a threshold date before we have inefficiency uh, uh, of this kind and after we have inefficiency of that kind. Let me explain a bit uh, more carefully uh, regarding the comparison. So let's first compare this second best mechanism uh, relative to uh, the A or not A at every period, kind of, you know, the, 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 the repetition of static IC mechanisms, yeah? Relative to this, so it looks like that, uh, except that we have stochastic uh, switch to, uh, uh, in case of zero two state, right? Um, and as in the, as we, uh, as if we see um, in the two period case, this is basically uh, leveraging the slackness of incentive compatibility and modifying the mechanism closer to the first best. And so it's an improvement relative to the um, uh, A or not A uh, mechanism, okay? Relative to the first best, as I said, before T star, uh, sorry, we have inefficiency uh, here. Yeah, we are sort of staying in A too much while after uh, we are leaving too much, yeah? So, I call the first kind of distortion as delay distortion, a delay remedy uh, to achieve the incentive compatibility. The reason why this is useful to achieve incentive compatibility is because, um, because of the following. Imagine that you are uninformed, yeah? In the first best, 
mechanism um, because of this A versus B, you have an incentive to mimic B type, right? Uh, and therefore, you know, IC is violated there. In other words, if you compare staying in A versus immediately leaving uh, to B, uh, you prefer leaving immediately. But now what happens if we have this sort of delay here? So even if, so suppose you are here, yeah? Um, if you claim your U type, of course you stay in A. If you mimic, even if you mimic your B type, you still have to stay in A for a while. Only at T star uh, you can leave, okay? This means that uh, the, pay, the, the gain of mimicking, uh, of mi misreporting your type is now smaller. On the other hand, you always have this option value of true steading. Like you may learn that you are potentially A type in some future before T star. And that sort of probability uh, is now uh, getting more and more important for you uh, as you know, this, uh, this delay is, uh, uh, is getting, um, uh, you know, as you have more delay. So uh, this uh, basically implies that you, know, uh, you have more uh, incentive to stay in uh, true state, okay? Another way to say, uh, question? Oh, not really, okay. Uh, another way to say is that you are in some sense punishing the too early B reports, yeah? Here, you know, in this situation, learning is slow. So if someone reports uh, that his B type in period one or period two, there is a good chance that, you know, it's actually a lie. I mean, uh, on pass, of course, no one lies, but, you know, statistically, um, it's unlikely that the guy really uh, learned his type. So by saying that, okay, uh, I take your comment, but, you know, uh, we still wait in uh, policy A for, you know, for certain periods, that way we are essentially punishing this uh, B reporting agent. Okay, so that way, you know, uh, so that's one useful remedy here. What about the other inefficiency? So after uh, T star, you are now uh, leaving uh, policy A, even if, um, uh, uh, even if, you know, people report uh, uninformed. And this is kind of, you know, carrot part of carrot and stick uh, policy. So imagine once again, you are uninformed, okay? And uh, as a special case, let's imagine that you uh, your time t, t star minus one. Yeah. So tomorrow uh, you'll be uh, oops, you'll be here, but uh, today you're still here. Okay. Now, if you claim you are uninformed, um, you have to be in policy A. But tomorrow, even if you don't learn your type, uh, you know whatever type, you can for sure leave to the EU. So once again, you have less incentive to mimic type B. Yeah? At the same time, in this last period, you still have a chance that you may learn your A type tomorrow. And in that case, you want to stay in policy A. So this option value still exists. Uh, and therefore, you know, uh, this sort of um, deadline uh, remedy is useful uh, to give more incentive. Yeah, so these two kinds of uh, incentive uh, tools are effective. Uh, to, to achieve uh, the incentive compatibility here. So that's the more or less the intuition that I can give uh, regarding this mechanism. Is it clear? Okay. If you have any question, uh, feel free to step in. Okay. Um, well, I uh, how I'm, about, yeah, sure. I have a question about the discount factor. So this result also meets the fact that delta is close to uh, zero is small, then, yeah, not too large at least, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, and so this delta is the same for the planner and the agent, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and same for everyone. So the planner would like to get the first best in the earlier period. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, if it would turn out that many people are B types, then yeah, it's better to uh, leave early. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you know, um, in this sort of uh, stopping problem, assuming delta too high is uh, is actually somewhat um, uninteresting because you know the option value oh. becomes larger and larger, yeah. right? Okay. So you always yeah. want to stay in some sense, yeah, until right. you perfectly learn everything, yeah. So some upper bound is necessary, but I mean, uh, what we are assuming is a bit more than that. Yeah, I must say. So we need okay. radius. I mean, not too high uh, delta. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, given so how how am I doing? I spend uh, forty seven minutes or something like that. Yeah, so you have about uh, 25, 28 minutes. So about okay, half, half okay, half okay. great. Yeah. Mm, yeah, thanks. So let me briefly uh, go over the proof idea. This is, of course, you know, not at all the complete proof, but you know, this is a way to. Um, uh, I mean, you know, I, I like the, the proof, uh, so I want to share this uh, enthusiasm a little bit with you, and I hope that this sort of idea could be potentially uh, useful in other dynamic uh, mechanism problems, so um, I hope uh, this will be useful in that way for you too. Okay, so basically, so here is a um, two-step uh, procedure that I uh, implemented to, to prove this result. The first step is to show that uh, what I describe here uh, satisfies all the incentive compatibilities uh, with equality. Yeah, and this is not, you know, this is more or less a by continuity argument. Uh, so I will skip the detail, uh, but you know, uh, just uh, trust me that this this is possible. Yeah, by choosing the probability at each period uh, appropriately. So that's one. What's the second uh, step? Uh, the second step is to set up a Lagrangian. So uh, we have, you know, basically linear objective and linear uh, uh, constraints, right? So the, the linear programming approach would be useful here. So uh, we have basically the objective, the total expected welfare, plus uh, the multiplier times each period incentive compatibility constraint, yeah, which is uh, basically the difference between the true staining payoff and the payoff under uh, B mimicking, yeah. Okay, and then we apply uh, Lagrangian weak duality argument here, uh, which is, uh, I mean, in one version uh, to say that if we can find non-negative Lagrange multipliers with which the candidate mechanism, the, this one, um, maximizes, uh, is optimal, right? That maximizes the Lagrangian value and also complementary slackness is satisfied. Then this candidate mechanism is optimal, yeah? And the second one we have already uh, confirmed in step one by continuity argument. Uh, and this uh, first one is, uh, well, I mean, basically, you know, uh, we, we have to do a guess and verify for the construction of multipliers uh, to, to make this candidate mechanism optimal. So that's, uh, that's how we do. Um, and, um, you know, uh, this, of course, like for those who, who are familiar with linear programming, this is, you know, sort of one-on-one -on -one linear programming uh, trick, but I think this, this can be quite useful uh, more generally in dynamic mechanism design. Okay, uh, so yeah, uh, I skip the detail and move on to the more agent case. <clears throat> so uh, with two plus so one just, agent, yeah. Just a question. Sure. Uh, so, so in the, uh, can you go back to slide? So, uh, so the slide before this. So the first step basically shows that in any optimal mechanism, all the IC constraints bind. Is that what you said? No, um, no, uh, no, I didn't say that. Um, so what I said is, uh, if you look at that uh, mechan this mechanism, this class uh -huh. of mechanisms, uh, then we can make all the ICs binding. So this is possible. This doesn't okay. feel verified that this is optimal, but you know, this satisfies all of them with equality. Oh, okay, okay. And now this second, uh, uh, this lemma says that if that was the case, and also, if we can find some multipliers with which this candidate mechanism is optimal, given that multiplier vector, then like the, the combination of these two guarantees that this is an is optimal mechanism. Okay. Right. So, uh, you know, a priori it is possible that an optimal mechanism does not satisfy all of them with equality. And in that case, the fact must be that we cannot find such multiplier vector which has these two properties. Uh, here in our problem, we could find such one. So, so that's uh, that's what we showed. Yeah. Okay. Does that? Yeah. Is it? Is it clear? Yeah. Clear. Okay. Thanks. Good. So, um, yeah. Uh, what happens with uh, more agents? <clears throat> Um, 
yeah, okay. Uh, so assume something similar, yeah? So alpha is less than one, but close, uh, pi is negative, but close to zero. And also small lambda and delta, actually um, what we can show is, so we, we don't know what is optimal mechanism with general M here. Uh, what we can show is that some similar mechanism uh, is approximately optimal, uh, which is basically a modification of A or not A mechanism uh, with delay and deadline remedies. Um, yeah. And we, uh, so I, I'm gonna explain why, you know, uh, what's the sense of approximate optimality and why uh, we think that is a useful result. Okay. So let's now imagine uh, N uninformed voters and the sort of fictitious M A informed voters, or if you like, you know, the principles is, uh, is biased in certain way. Um, here, like we, I assume M equal one. So there is one A informed voter as before, like voter zero, and even uh, uninformed uh, voters here. Um, yeah. So the, the the previous case was a special case with N equal two. The other cases uh, are sort of qualitatively similar. Uh, I'm not going into the detail. <clears throat> okay. So here is the the mechanism that turns out to be. Uh, approximate optimal in certain sense. So it's, uh, it's a generalization of the previous uh, mechanism. Let me explain, um, uh, you know, bit by bit. Uh, so now it's slightly more complicated in the sense that it depends on what is the number of A reports we already have uh, by time T, yeah? Um, before, well, okay, yeah, so that, that, that's the, the main difference or main complication. So let me explain uh, the easiest case. So if we have already uh, the number of A reports, which is greater than the majority, then, you know, basically we can stay forever in policy A, yeah? We are in a safe region. If the number of A reports is before this uh, majority, then what happens is similar to the previous mechanism, so there is some uh, deadline or election date, T star. Uh, before or after T star, uh, basically, um, you know, it becomes all B in that row, okay? And before T star, um, you have, uh, you stay in policy A if uh, the number of B reports is smaller than some threshold. You leave if it is above, and perhaps some probability of staying if you're exactly at that threshold, yeah, to, to make ICs bind. And the difference is that this uh, election date, this T star um, depends on the number of A reports which has happened uh, so far, yeah. And this T star is increasing in A and this threshold uh, value of B is increasing in A and decreasing in T. So uh, basically like the, uh, what you can imagine is that there is an election date, yeah, T star, which is determined according to um, how much A reports or B reports are uh, made by, uh, by them. Yeah? If you have more A reports, you, uh, you postpone the election date. Um, if you have more B reports, then you uh, make it forward. Um, and uh, once that uh, timing comes, then you just look at whether you have uh, enough A votes or, uh, or not. And in the second case, you leave the EU. So it's, uh, well, it's a bit more complicated, but you know, has a similar flavor as before. And a similar inefficiency as before, in the sense that um, before this uh, election date or deadline T star, um, you are basically staying too much relative to the first best. Um, and after uh, this deadline, uh, if you're leaving too much relative to the first list. So that's the delay and deadline uh, remedies. Okay, ah, so yeah, I forgot to uh, talk about implementation in the two plus one agent case, um, uh, but it, yeah, perhaps I should the first, uh, can I, oh, why I missed that? Uh, yeah, so let me first uh, talk about in interpretation or implementation of the second best mechanism in this uh, two plus one agent case, and then uh, talk about more agent case, which is uh, somewhat similar. Um, so 
remember this was the two plus one case. And the interpretation is that this T star, this deadline T star is basically an election date, okay? And um, so at this election date, we do this A versus not A kind of uh, uh, election. And if we have at least one A vote, we stay in, in FOC A, otherwise we leave. Before that, we are basically waiting uh, A, sorry, waiting T star by staying in A, but there is one exception, which is when there is uh, enough B report. Yeah? In that case, we switch to B with some probability or with some delay. Okay? So uh, you can imagine that it's a kind of election plus petitions. Um, if you have enough petitions for leaving, then you front load the decision uh, without waiting uh, until T star. In the other cases, you basically wait until this uh, fixed election timing T star. And then you do this A versus not A election. Yeah. And it's similar here. Oops. Um, except that this T star now depends on A, the number of uh, uh, A reports or the number of A petitions. Yeah. So if you have many A petitions, you postpone uh, one more direction dates. If you have more B petitions, you front load it. Yeah. So that's the, uh, that's the idea. Okay, so uh, let me explain what do I mean by approximate optimality and why I think this is a useful result, and then I conclude. So here is, uh, here is the claim. So we are looking at the fraction of two things. Yeah. And uh, you know, remember the assumption that lambda is small, uh, this is in the order of lambda. So if lambda is small, this fraction is small. Okay. So what is this fraction? The numerator, is basically the difference between exactly optimal mechanism and approximately optimal mechanism or the mechanism just I, I just described here. Yeah. So the, the difference in the performance uh, is this uh, numerator, okay? Of course, I don't know what is the exactly optimal mechanism. Yeah, if I do, uh, I don't need this approximate uh, optimal res uh, result. So what I can uh, get is an upper bound of this uh, orange, yeah? So that's, uh, that, that will be here. But anyway, so uh, this, the claim is that this numerator, the difference between orange and red, is small relative to the denominator, which is the difference between orange and black. So black is what you can achieve under optimal A or not A uh, repetition mechanism. So this red and black, it basically um, I, uh, identifies how much improvement you can make uh, based on this sort of benchmark mechanism. The claim is that uh, if you look at this delay and uh, deadline remedies, you always, sorry, you already achieve quite high fraction of uh, the achievable, potentially achievable uh, improvement, yeah? So there could be additional jump you can make by considering, I don't know, more complicated history dependence and so on and so forth. But um, when lambda is small, that additional step does not make a too much difference um, relative to what you have already achieved by delay and deadline. In other words, uh, based on this, I want to argue that delay and deadline remedies are quite important, a significant uh, as a uh, as a tool uh, to have an improvement. Okay. So, you know, that's an excuse uh, for not getting uh, exact uh, optimal mechanism. Great, so uh, let me conclude. Um, so here uh, we studied this uh, dynamic uh, social decision problem with gradual learning. Um, first base is often impossible, uh, similar to the reason uh, in the static literature but we can do better uh, in the dynamic uh, situation than just repeating static optimal mechanism. So that's you know, the, the interesting aspect of this uh, dynamic uh, problem. And um, in particular, the key sort of concept uh, we identified is this option value, value of true stating. Um, this I think suggests that in practice, we should encourage revelation of ignorance. Um, uh, in, you know, in those important elections. For example, in Brexit, afterward, we kind of learned that there, there seemed to be lots of people who didn't know what are their true preferences and just voted for one or two, uh, whatever reasons, 
but you know if we could identify who are still uninformed and need some time to learn well uh you know uh, hopefully that can make some difference okay and uh, the way uh this um uh this mechanism can be improved is uh this delay and deadline as we have argued um so with slow learning we know it's either optimal or approximately optimal and uh, this could be uh, implemented by some election with petitions sort of idea okay um future questions uh, of course you know it's a purely private value iid environment you know a natural question is what happens with common value aggregate uncertainty um principle is quite strong uh, has a quite strong commitment power of course as in the, you know uh, all the uh, mechanism design papers but uh, a natural realistic question is what happens if uh, he has more limited uh, commitment power and as i said uh, this uh, this work weak duality idea might be useful in other dynamic mechanism design problems like dynamic auction dynamic trading public goods we can imagine perhaps uh, other kind of uh, problems. If you have any idea, um, that would be, you know, uh, uh, that would be quite welcome. But for now, let me stop my talk. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Takuro. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, thanks, Takuro. This is a very interesting model and very interesting Thank result. You. Uh, Thank you. You know, just kind of, um, um, <laughs> you know, sort of a practical question. It's rare to find, uh, you know, repeated referenda or repeated uh, things. I mean, it's, I mean, I don't know, maybe one can find one or two uh, cases, you know, independence of Quebec or something. Maybe there are two. But, uh, you know, you don't trust the motives of the government if they're constantly having referendum. Then the idea is that they will stop when they get a result favorable. Yeah. So, you know, can it be recast in some sense as the timing of the referendum? So basically in every time period, you can decide whether or not to have the referendum. I mean, people say yes or no. And then at some point you have the referendum, but then the results are binding. You know, it's, uh, uh, you know, is there just some way to recast messages or something like hmm. that, make that same problem? I mean, or not, I mean... Um, so I don't think in general, well, okay, um, let me see. Yeah, I don't think in general it's, uh, it's the same problem, uh, because, uh, you know, um, uh, so your, um, your story makes more sort of constraint on the, the principal side, right? What, uh, what we can do, um, uh, and uh, I agree that, yeah, in, in, in practice, uh, it's, uh, it's perhaps relatively rare that we run, I don't know, three referendum uh, to, 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 to make some decisions. Um, but uh, so, yeah, actually, like um, one thing I want to mention is that, you know, this sort of the, the second best mechanism that we found here has some uh, flavor uh, uh, to, you know, uh, of what, what you're suggesting that, so imagine that, you know, by referendum or by election, uh, it basically uh, either voting for A or B and the result is kind of um, uh, uh, forever, yeah? Uh, so, you know, once it's determined, you don't change uh, the policy. Um, this, this is like this. So at T-star, you decide either to forever stay in A or leave for B forever. Uh, but before um, we just wait until this T star, uh, with the possibility that people make some voices uh, through, let's say, some petitions. And if we have enough uh, B reports, or a, well, in this case, only B reports, um, then uh, uh, we either make a decision earlier or change the election date accordingly in the later, a more agent version. So I guess, yeah, so in this way, you know, one thing um, uh, I'm perhaps suggesting here is that even if we have only one election at some point, uh, by making this election date dependent on the people's uh, voice before, um, yeah, it could uh, have some uh, nice outcome. Yeah, so that's what I was suggesting, some, uh, you know, uh, recasting of the messages in some way that, uh, 
you know, okay, we continue a little further or something like that, or we stop mm, now. Or right. Yeah, just you know, instead of having the repeated referendum, just should we have a referendum kind of question? Mm, right, right, right. Yeah. No, I think yeah, um, yeah. So here, I yeah, the, this that that is my uh, interpretation, um, and and true that uh, yeah, we don't necessarily have multiple uh, referenda. Uh, we can implement the same thing uh, through petitions or some other ways. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Just to remind myself, the lambda is the probability with which you stay uninformed. Is that fair? Sorry, lambda is the probability that you learn. Oh, that, that you learn. Okay. And yeah. That, that, so small lambda means learning is slow. Right. So that's why it is slow learning. So I, I was curious, like, what happens as the period goes on, the probability of being informed increases? Uh, is, right. is, that a, is that an intractable model? Uh, like so, so that, yeah, indeed that happens. So, yeah, um, so that, that's actually related to your question of, you know, what happens uh, uh, when delta is very high. So right. um, initially, like we are around here, right? But uh, over time, let's say at least one will be perhaps informed. And after a very like million yeah. of uh, periods, most likely all of them learn something. So if delta is high, you can just wait until that moment and then say, okay, now we vote either oh. A or B. Everyone knows their position. So that, that's going to be a socially efficient decision. Um, but with slow learning and the small delta, you don't want to wait until that point. You want to make a decision earlier. Okay. okay. Uh, I have a question. Can you ask? My name is... Sure, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, my name is Pratima Yadav and... Sorry for just yes. coming faculty, guest faculty. Yeah, no, I work yeah, in nice SMS, Faculty yeah. of Management Studies, Delhi University. Okay. I will take on from Professor uh, Shee in which he was talking about, you know, these are the politician uh, uh, in developed country mostly, whatever they say, they do it. But a country like India, where politician might say something today or, you know, give the, uh, their, uh, you know, these are the things layout, I'm going to do it. But over the period of, Either they withdraw their things or they deny. They don't do that. So what, how, as a being, as a voter, how I should react on those conditions? Because of then your model is not going to work. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, you know, this here the principle is kind of um, ideal in, uh, in many respects. Uh, and the one is, uh, one is preference uh, aspect. You know, the real government probably is not uh, not utilitarian, uh, but you know, somewhat more uh, biased for whatever reasons. And another thing is the commitment issue uh, regarding the decisions. Even if you know the benevolent government, if he sees that what, let's say, the decision of staying in A, uh, which way? Uh, well, I mean, you know, the decision uh, whatever he has made, be, uh, he's supposed to do today. Uh, seems to be not sequentially rational. Of course, he he wants to change his mind. So um, uh, in this way, you know, um, uh, the the model or the results here is describing the kind of benchmark of uh, what kind of um, uh, inefficiencies are sort of not not avoidable, even if you know the principle is uh, that sort of ideal entity. And if you know this uh, principle or government uh, whoever is more sort of realistic uh, in in several dimensions, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's a different question. I mean, that's uh, more uh, practically important. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Well, then thank you, Takuro. Uh, thank you for the thank seminar. You. Very interesting paper. Uh, so, I, uh, thanks for your time, and so see you <laughs> sometime. Uh, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah, for your you comments much, and your thank questions. You. Thanks. Uh, we we so we look. Uh, hopefully, you'll have a cleaner uh, uh, result for the more than three agents case. Uh, uh, is that what you're planning for future versions? So, sorry, say again. 
for future versions, did you plan to have uh, more results on the more than three agents case? And because now you have yeah, this, uh, well, <laughs> um, ideally yes, but uh, yeah. So we um, yeah, at least I tried uh, quite a bit uh, for this more agent case, uh, but it seems quite. Uh, yeah, it's it's quite intractable, I must oh. say. So um, especially, yeah. So this so history dependence. I didn't uh, really sort of mention yeah. here, yeah. but uh, yeah, uh, potentially it's possible that you know the optimal mechanism say treats reports in period ten only in period twenty, for example. There is no reason why not. Um, but in but, but cases that. Suppose one could restrict uh, the set of mechanisms in some reasonable way. Uh, yeah, yeah, would that yeah. Be, uh, okay. That's, yeah, that's the, the plan. Yeah, let's say that's a plan. Um, at least, um, yeah, that's uh, the next step that we plan to do. Um, hopefully, yeah, uh, what we found here is either, yeah, you know, optimal or again, you know, uh, cross the optimal in a good sense. Um, my my guess is yes, but uh, yeah, uh, never know. Okay, okay, okay. All the yeah. best. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for. No, uh, thanks a lot. The nice series. talk. We learned a lot. Yeah. Thanks. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.